These debts are on you. The injuries, the trauma, the loss of income lie at your hands. I'm angry, frustrated, disappointed and disillusioned. And I'm done talking, writing letters and begging government to take responsibility and decisive action. So says the CEO of long distance bus company Intercape. If you travel across the country by bus, your choice now it appears is no longer just about which luxury coach you may want to take, but it could be one of life or death. The battle for long distance routes is turning deadly and the taxi industry wants in on it. And so buses are now prime targets of shooting, stoning and even torching regardless of whether they are passengers on board. Johan Ferreira is the group CEO of Intercape and joins us now on the line. Thank you so much for your time this morning. 150 incidents reported, I understand, since 2021. How bad is it? Well, um, good morning um, and good morning listeners. Yeah, it is bad. Uh, I must be honest with you. 31 stonings um, during uh, 2022 and 21 shootings during 2022. So the attacks are escalating. And um, I lie this this problem um, that has escalated to these levels right at the doorstep of firstly, the president, secondly, the minister of police, and thirdly, the minister of transport. Um, I have, as you rightly said, written extensively um, to these uh, officers. Um, and so, yeah, this is where we, this is where we add. I, I, there's not much I can do from my side uh, in, in, in terms of writing letters and reporting these incidents. It's, it's now up to government to act or not. Tell me about uh, Mangikaya Machana, uh, a driver of yours, 35 years old, a family man, shot dead whilst he was driving a bus out of uh, one of your Cape Town depots in April. Yeah, that's correct. That's 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 a very that is a tragic incident, and um, we were all shocked. You know, where Banki Kaya was shot is literally fifty meters outside my office at our headquarters in Cape Town near Airport Industria, and um, yeah, it, it, he leaves behind his two children and his his destitute wife, and um, and you know what the sad thing for me is that um, we Intercape sponsored a bus to take the family and mourners down to the Eastern Cape to Idutra where he was buried. And when the taxis saw, the taxi owners and drivers saw that there was an intercape bus in a no-go zone, such as Idutra, they stopped the bus and they prevented these mourners from attending the funeral. I mean, how, how heartless must you be? That's extraordinary. So, that is extraordinary. <laughs> I mean, just and just days later, and it's happening around the country. That's the picture I want to be able to set for our listeners because just days after that, another bus was sprayed with bullets on the M2 highway in Joburg in broad daylight, I understand. Yeah, <clears throat> there were three separate attacks in, in the Gauteng area. And uh, it, was, it was either gunmen shooting from bridges or standing next to the road or even a drive-by, a car coming from the back overtaking the bus and then shooting at the bus and the driver. And that happened in Johannesburg. That's correct, in Gauteng area. The CCTV footage of some of these attacks, and they show these gunmen, some of them uh, clearly identifiable, and they're opening fire on these buses. Obviously, I'd imagine passengers uh, are terrified, children, parents, everybody ducking for cover, uh, and you've got images of who's behind it. Yeah, look, I've got no illusions about who's behind it. It is tax, definitely taxi associations and their and their members and even chair people, um, people of of authority. Um, I have met on several occasions um, with these gentlemen um, until I understood exactly what was going on, and then I stopped meeting. Um, and that's why we are punished. That's why Intercape are being shot at, not the other coach company. So I have chosen not to be intimidated and paying bribes um, and, um, you know, partake in collusion. Yo- so, Yo- Johan, just explain for, what you mean when you say you understand what's going on. What is it that they are demanding from you? Well, first and foremost, they're demanding to toe the line and, 
And the line that, that I should be towing is I should dance to their pipes in the sense that they bring demands, such as in the Eastern Cape. They will um, determine how many coaches you can run on a particular route. They will determine what is the timetable that you can run on. They will deti- determine the, the, ti- the, the price table, in other words, ticket fares. Um, they will dictate to you how much you can charge. Um, and, um, and, 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 you know, that, that to me is not an option. You, know, it's, it's, you cannot have one industry capturing another industry and then running it uh, by gunpoint. You know, we, we've learned recently about state, state capture. This is industry capture. You can look at what's happening in Kuzula Natal with the, with the construction industry. There is an industry that's also been captured by a mafia, making certain demands by gunpoint. This is no different. This is no different. And, and South Africa and its people, its citizens, need to wake up to these things that's happening around us. Today, it's, you know, the trains are already being neutralized um, by being burned to the ground and cables and other infrastructure vandalized and stolen. Now they're busy with the buses. The next will be the airlines. I can tell you that for nothing. And they and will you stop say, at nothing if you, they're not being stopped. Johan, you say they're demanding this. And so what's the alternative? Do this or else? Well, do this or you will be, your buses will be stoned and shot at. That's as simple as that. This is, this is, this is, this is clearly extortion. I mean, I was phoned um, and, 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 and by a taxi uh, chairman and demanded 5 million rand uh, for two taxi associations in Cape Town, and then they will leave me alone. Then I can go about my business, but I should pay them 5 million rand. Other taxi associations sent us a letter demanding 100,000 rand a year, um, just one town in the Eastern Cape. So listen, it's all about money. You know, it's, it's like everything in life or most things in life. Just follow the money and you will get the source of the problem. So, so, so hold on. What the police need to do, <laughs> they just need to follow the money. Hold on, Johan. <laughs> You're saying these taxi associations are openly writing you these letters, presumably on their letterheads, telling you what these demands are. And in fact, I understand in the Eastern Cape, the MEC, uh, in fact, said you should accede to their demands. Yeah, look, I was overseas at the time with my family in France skiing and, and I got a call and, and, and it was the MEC and that is on the back of a 24-hour uh, blockade in Aditya in the Eastern Cape where the taxis came and they uh, took trucks, parked it across the road, took the keys and for 24 hours that, that N2 was at a standstill. The, the shops, the schools in Aditya closed so obviously, you know, it was a big upset. Um, and so the minister came and sat down with the taxis. Apparently, according to my information, the police were also present. They make certain demands. So there are certain towns which were not allowed to operate them. And she called me and she said, well, you know, for the safety of everyone, we should not be operating in these towns. So at the moment, we can't operate in Aiducha. Um, Butterworth, Nobo, Chomo, Kofumbaba, um, Namakwe, um, and, 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 and I believe, I have it on good authority, that this, this effort of uh, systematic, systematic cleansing of an industry out of an area is going to continue. King Williamstown, uh, Queenstown, Port Elizabeth, which London will be next. And so she demanded me to come back to South Africa and sit down with the taxis and negotiate. And I said, I will not do that. I have been in a, in a meeting where I was um, pushed in a corner, so to speak. And, um, and I'm not going to do that again. I'm not going to be in, intimidated by 80 men telling me how to run my business. Um, and um, she said she will write me a letter. She never wrote the letter. And so, yeah, so this is where we're at. She effectively interfered with the work of the police because at that time Intercape was being escorted through the Eastern Cape by the police and they did a sterling job I must say whenever there was a police car following the bus no incident whenever there was a reason or an incident where a 
police car did not follow the bus, there was a shooting. So clearly there's a leak in the police as well in the Eastern Cape. That I've got also no doubt about. Gosh. Johan Ferreira, thank you so much for your time this morning. The Intercape Group CEO, the minister, of course, the minister of police, this is Begit Dele, has conceded that this is a problem. But really, is anything being done about it? I mean, I don't know if you can find a clearer picture of lawlessness than what you've just heard. Current events. Developing stories. Tough questions. Your voice making a difference. This is Breakfast with Bongani Bingwa.